maize. The fact that this foreign cereal grain, and others for that matter, became a staple in West Africa is something I've been curious about. In this episode, I will provide a brief background on the history of maize in West Africa and then talk about some of its uses in Benin. Maize, aka corn, is one of the most produced cereal crops, if not the most produced in West Africa. Specifically in Benin, maize, also known as agbado or gbade depending on the region, is the number one produced and consumed grain. Indigenous to the Americas, it is said to have been introduced in West Africa somewhere between the late 15th century and early 16th century by the Portuguese. In a pretty short period of time, maize has become the main staple crop in many parts of West Africa, replacing traditional grains like sorghum and millet in many regions. So why is that? The quick answer probably revolves around words like slavery, colonization, and modernization. Focusing on colonization, and to cut a story short, my understanding is this. Once the colonizers took over West Africa, they started leasing lands to other European settlers, displacing the inhabitants of those regions. Some moved to less fertile areas, and others stayed to work as laborers because they had no other choice. In exchange, they had to grow food for their white masters. That includes corn. Okay, truth is, they were probably given maize sacks in return because corn was said to make a strong labor force. In other words, eating corn kept the West African labor strong to be able to work the fields of cash crops like cotton, cocoa, and peanuts. Also, many took to the growing of the crop because it sold faster, which means they could make money to pay taxes imposed by the colonial government. To summarize, the colonizers basically stole land from indigenous people manipulated their food and agricultural policies, and took corruption to another level in order to get what they wanted. Something to keep in mind is that growing maize has destroyed our lands over time due to the amount of fertilization required to grow it. Oftentimes, after being used to grow corn, the piece of land loses its value in terms of richness of soil. Okay, back to Benin. Because corn needs water to thrive, it grows the most in the southern and central part of the country. Food consumption in those regions is dominated by maize-derived product. In the northern part of the country, food consumption is still dominated by millet and sorghum, but corn isn't too far as well. The majority of corn grown in Benin is the white corn. I've also noticed that our corn isn't as sweet as the corn I buy here in the States. There are many different ways we consume corn in Benin. I will briefly introduce some of them here, and in future episodes, I will talk about these dishes in greater detail. Overall, we use what I'm going to call young corn and old corn. Harvesting is usually done by hand by smallholder farmers. Young corn is harvested when the corn still has most of its water content. Generally, young corn is consumed two ways, grilled or roasted, and then boiled or steamed. The best grilled or steamed corn uses corn that is harvested on the same day. Something you might hear people ask street sellers is if they're selling bade fe and that's them making sure they're buying freshly harvested corn. Old corn is harvested when the corn has lost most of its water content. Once it is harvested, it has to be dried again to further reduce its water content. If during drying time it rains, the farmers lose. 
so they have to pick the right time to harvest and dry the grains. After drying, the corn kernels are removed from the cobs. And then, just like we saw with the sorghum, winnowing and cleaning of the grains is usually done prior to storing or selling. Old corn has many more derived products. The end maize products are mainly classified as pastes porridges, and beverages. And the base of this product is either dry milled corn flour, wet milled fermented moist flour or dough, or wet milled fermented corn dough obtained after sieving the moist flour. Number one, chakpalo. This is a sweet and sour drink that is typically sold on the streets in southern Benin. There is also another one called adoyo. Number two, mawe. Mawe is a sourdough made from fermented corn. It is used to make many mawe derived products. Number three, akuli. Akuli is a fermented porridge prepared from mawe granules it is typically eaten for breakfast and sold as street food. Number four, akasa. Akasa is a fermented white paste with a slightly acidic taste made from mawe starch. It is typically wrapped in leaves and sold as street food. Number five, koko. If you remember my sorghum episode, same thing, but this time it is made with corn. Number six, thick corn pastes. These are eaten with stews or sauces, and they can be made from corn flour or toasted corn flour. The corn flour is cooked in boiled water or in a boiled sauce to obtain a thick paste. There are many, many more, sometimes combined with other ingredients like peanuts or cowpeas. For example, I have not even covered any of the corn-based snacks that we eat, but I hope to discuss more on our corn-based dishes in future episodes. In the next one, we are going to spend some time with Asia to learn how she makes a type of corn porridge known as bita. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future uploads. If you liked this episode, please give it a thumbs up and let me know if you learned something new in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.